Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, before we start the meeting, our city clerk reads a quote of the week. Thank you, Mayor. May the spirit of Christmas bring you peace, the gladness of Christmas give you hope, the warmth of Christmas grant you love. Thank you very much. Call the 18th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Excuse. Ryan. Here. Zurich. Here. Vanderweel. Excuse. For Hasselt. Here. And Wangeman. Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. At this time, I'd ask everybody to rise. Alderman Boren, would you please lead us in pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Approval of the minutes, uh, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move for approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. First on our list this evening is Richard Hartman. If you could come up, sir, up to the mic. And I would ask that you pull the mic down towards you so everybody can hear. You'll be able to hear me. <laughs> and I need your home address, please. Thank you. Can I get your home address? Uh, 2423 North 23rd Street. All right, and you will have five minutes. Thank you again. The issue of vacation and discontinuance of the portion of North 21st Street that lies between North Avenue and Calumet Drive has been one of contention that this city has had to deal with before. It seems the city is inviting more controversy over that slightly less than one half acre parcel of real estate. According to city records, that piece of land was once a street that was once a street has become privately owned property as of mid October 2008. The city assessor's office tells me that a reassessment of the abutting property owner's holdings that include this newly acquired gift of land from the city would take place sometime after the first of the new year. To me, this means that for two and a half months, those property owners are not being taxed to the same degree I am taxed for the property I own. When property changes hands, the taxing entity doesn't really care who pays the tax, but we would hope that the entity would collect those taxes that are due them. These past few years, the emphasis has been on, giving, on saving money due to the financial challenges facing the city and by all indicators will continue for at least a few more years. What puzzles me is why the practice of saving money isn't always a large concern, good times or bad. Certification of the passage of this ordinance, number 470809, has been given to at least 15 city of Sheboygan department heads or groups of people. Yet it is, a, it is apparent that no one has questioned this lack of responsibility. For the assessor's office, it wouldn't take a whole lot of reassessing. The area of concern is clearly indicated on city records and is attached to the ordinance itself, at least on my copy. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Is Mike Vanderstein? <coughs> uh, 
And Mike, Mike Vanderstein, 320 Lincoln Avenue, County Board Chairman. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak, Mayor and Council members. Uh, tonight on your agenda, you've got an item uh, about a joint purchasing agent proposal. And uh, as I go back and, and look at the first time I came to speak to you after I became County Board Chairman, uh, the Mayor and Mark Hanna invited Adam Payne and myself to meet with them on a bi-weekly basis. And we've been doing that ever since. And this is one of the things that we talked about in some of those early meetings. In uh, late summer, early fall, we had a County Board vote on this issue and it passed uh, 29 to 3. And uh, we passed it on. For your consideration, it's made it through two of your committees and coming up before you tonight. I think this is a perfect example of continuing some of the other things that we've done in cooperation in many areas, some in our law enforcement, some recently in our uh, HR departments with wellness programs, uh, our public works and our, and our highway department. And many of the things we've done, you know, we're going to share a salary or we're going to share an expense. But I think this particular item has a chance not only for us to split a salary on a purchasing agent, but I really feel str quite strongly that the purchasing agent is going to be able to identify many things that we can either get better pricing on because we're purchasing in larger volumes. He'll find things that the two of us can do together and save money on. So I think this has the opportunity to produce many more results and save the taxpayers of the area much more in the way of dollars. So I really appreciate your, your vote tonight on this. Uh, after you get done with this tonight, then we'll take it back to our uh, finance committee for the final approval on the contract, and then uh, hopefully we can begin this January 1st. And I'm really happy to see that we're going to do something on a 50-50 basis for the first six months while we explore things and see how things work out. And then we'll sit back and evaluate it and try to find out a combination that works uh, the best after that. But we're going to have Bernie Romer have a period of time to get associated with all the city staff and how the city works. And we felt that this was the best way to approach this is just split it evenly for six months. And then after that, we'll see where we go and what works best for the communities. So thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. And last would be Adam Payne. Adam, can I have your home address, please? Um, N 5235 County Road S, Plymouth, Town of Plymouth. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I don't think I can say anything that Chairman Vandersteen didn't share. As a county administrator, of course, I have the pleasure of working with you and the mayor and, and 34 county board supervisors. And as I was driving over here, I really was thinking about, you know, what can I say to this group? And, and I think the number one thing is thank you. You know, thank you for many of the initiatives of late that we've had in play and we've been working on together. The purchasing agent position was one of the first things that uh, Chairman Vandersteen brought forward to the county board when he started. It was something that he really felt would make, would benefit the county and the city if we could share such a position. And as he said, with the, the mayor's support and Alderman Hanna and Jim Gisha and others around this table, Alder, Alderperson Montemayor for bringing it forward, thank you. Uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained, and I really think this is an opportunity that a lot could be gained. Bernie Romer's been our purchasing agent now for about seven or eight years, and I know you had a good one, and uh, Kim for Helst, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. In fact, he advised me when I started with the county 10 years ago on the importance of a purchasing agent and what it could mean, and the county first uh, introduced a purchasing agent then, and literally Bernie Romer has saved Sheboygan County taxpayers millions. I think he's a good person, and I think working with the city and the county, as Chairman Vandersteen said, I think he's going to uncover things and opportunities that we're going to be able to do more on behalf of our respective taxpayers. I also want to say thank you uh, regarding Morgan Aircraft. What a tremendous opportunity that is for our community. And certainly as the mayor, and I think everyone in this room is aware, it's very exciting. Work has begun at the Sheboygan County Airport. Ground's been broken. And uh, everything we hear from Mr. Morgan, the president of the company, is that things are progressing well. Ultimately, the prize over a 50, maybe $75 billion development, 2,000 jobs, new jobs for the area. What a wonderful opportunity. And again, we've been pulling in the same direction together to make that happen. So thank you. The wellness programs that we've been working on of late, some nice press on that of regard. But what a good thing for our employees. You know, thank you. 
Uh, we are looking at joint dispatch right now, and that's going to be that's going to be a tougher challenge, I think, than some of the others that I may have mentioned. But we're working on it together, and that's a good thing. And uh, finally, just and, and again, Chairman Vanderstein touched on this, but the most recent example I can point out specifically is our highway department was looking at adding a piece of equipment at the cost of about two hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars, and. Fortunately, there was some discussion about working with the city, working with your public works director, and now five, six times a year when we need that piece of property we're gonna, or piece of equipment, we're going to work with the city and use it on an hourly basis rather than two entities owning over a $200,000 piece of equipment. Thank you. That's a winner. So I appreciate the relationships that we've built. I appreciate some of the good work that's in play, and I know we've got a lot of challenges ahead of us. And, and thank you for your um, attention tonight to the purchasing agent position that's your position, and thank you for the good work that you've done. Thank you. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> thank you very much uh, to those that address the council. Next item on the agenda is a presentation of tourism. Oh. I'd like to address the council. If that's on the hearing. Hold on, hold on. We're not, hold on, just, I think you want to address the council on the, uh, there's the two ways of doing it here. Are you, are you here for that property, the Brown Drive? Okay. Yeah. There's two ways of doing it. The public forum has a limit of five people, five minutes each with one, one minute extension, but you need to call the city clerk prior to get on the agenda. The other way is the one that you will probably be utilizing or take, availing yourself of is that we'll, we'll notice a hearing and ask if there's anybody who would like to provide input to the council. So if you just bear with us for, for a few minutes, okay? We'll get you. Thank you very much. This time, Kim Swisher. Good evening, Mayor Perez and members of the council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I am pleased to report that the City of Sheboygan Tourism Division had a busy and successful year. Through astronomical gas prices and a struggling economy, we continue to attract visitors to our great city. Our primary gauge, room collections, clearly illustrates that we are effectively reaching visitors. In the first quarter of this year, we experienced an increase of 16.1% over last year. In the second quarter of this year, we experienced an increase of 18.6%. We are currently showing a slight loss for the third quarter, but as of today, we are still awaiting payments. Fourth quarter figures should be available in the first quarter of next year. This past year, our aggressive efforts have been focused on increasing lodging occupancy through four conduits. The first is our increased marketing via the internet, such as e-newsletters, keywords, and banner ads. We frequently send emails to contacts in our database, we have com been compiling visitor information since our inception in January of 2006. We continue to generate new, contract, new contacts by promoting our website, visitsheboygan.com, in all of our marketing initiatives. Because of our marketing efforts, our website has experienced significant growth. As of last month, our statistics show that we are averaging 21,428 visitors per month. We regularly update our site and believe that this remains our most effective and cost-efficient marketing outlet. Our second tool for increasing lodging occupancy is our increased number of city festivals and events. Our scenery and our proximity to Lake Michigan are major assets in our portfolio of offerings to visitors. Our unique settings such as the South Pier Peninsula and our city parks, including DeLand, give us a distinct advantage for hosting outdoor events and activities. The Wisconsin Department of Tourism tells us that over 16% of visitors traveling do so to attend an event or a festival. In 2007, travelers spent $12.776 billion in the state of Wisconsin. Sheboygan County attracted 2.76% of that, or 352.5 million of the state's total. In reviewing how travelers spent their money statewide, the department noted that 30% was spent on shopping, 27% was spent on food, 20% was spent on activities such as festivals and events. 
This is significant when you consider that lodging was just 13%. This also reinforces our efforts in hosting and promoting city festivals and outdoor activities. We believe they're worthwhile. That being the case, in March, we hosted the second annual Sipping on Sheboygan Shores Microbrew and Wine Tasting Festival. We welcomed a record number of attendees and plans are underway for our third year event. We hosted our inaugural Roar on Sheboygan Shores Motorcycle Rally in June Despite horrible weather, it rained the whole weekend, we had a promising first year event and plans are underway for next year. This year we coordinated the city's July 4th festivities for the first time. We are proud of our cooperative efforts with the Sheboygan Police Department and several community organizations. We look forward to the 2009 celebration. We coordinated the Mayor's Twilight Concert Series at Fountain Park for the first time this summer. We introduced a variety of musical acts, and we look forward to continuing a balance of traditional music and contemporary bands for the 2009 season. Our second annual South Pier Labor Day Festival was very successful this year. We welcomed the Kettle Moraine Corvette Club's annual car show, as well as a national entertainer, Daryl Sturmer of Genesis. Plans are already underway next year. We're welcoming back the carnival and the car show, and we're adding a new attraction, the SV Dennis Sullivan Schooner, Wisconsin's flagship, to South Pier for the entire weekend. We'll be selling tickets for sailing trips, and we look forward to another successful event. For 2009, we're working on two new events. We are collaborating with the Harbor Center Business Improvement District to host a new Taste of Sheboygan Outdoor Food Festival that will be held on Sunday, July 26th on 8th Street. We are also working with community members to host the first annual Oktoberfest on Sheboygan's shores. The event will be held Saturday, September 19th on the South Pier Peninsula near Weissgerber's Seabird Restaurant. Looking ahead, plans are underway for the 2010 Sheboygan Film and Music Festival, which will be held Memorial Day weekend. Our third increasing lodging occupancy is targeted marketing. While we originally expected to garner more traffic from the Chicagoland area, we are finding that our strongest markets have been the Milwaukee, Northern Illinois, the Fox Valley, and Madison areas. Events such as the Sipping Microbrew and Wine Tasting event are drawing overnight stays from within an hour's drive of Sheboygan. We have also found that marketing in our revised target areas is more economical and it's easier to tailor to specific targeted demographics. Finally, our fourth tool for increasing lodging occupancy is our effective relationships with county tourism partners and regional associations. We continue to believe that cooperative efforts increase our ability to participate in programs and activities that might otherwise be unavailable to us. We are an active member of the Tourism Alliance of Sheboygan County and work closely with our county partners. Members include Elkhart Lake, Kohler, Plymouth, Random Lake, Sheboygan Falls, and the Sheboygan County Chamber the county calendar of events, and the lodging availability report are just two of the initiatives that we have facilitated. We are also a member of the Wisconsin Harbor Towns Association. The group is comprised of 18 Harbor Town communities along Lake Michigan and Lake Superior. We participate in a variety of Harbor Town activities, most recently coordinating the second annual Clean Beach Sweep. In the packet of information that I have provided you are the 2009 tourism initiatives that I submitted to Mayor Perez and the Tourism Advisory Committee. An item that is not included in there is that the tourism coordinator position will be increased to 30 hours a week beginning January. While the table of organization has the position listed as full time, it's been part time, 20 hours a week, since the tourism division's inception. Tamara Wright joined the Tourism Division in June, and based upon the increased activities and events, I felt that it was appropriate to add the 10 hours per week to the position. We budgeted accordingly in our 2009 planning, and I am looking forward, I'm looking very forward, to the additional assistance. A final item for your consideration is an agenda item. Tonight you will be on the City Tourism 
division entering into a two-year lease with Memorial Mall. The division would like to rent a small office, approximately 1,000 square feet, on the northeast side of the mall near Sears. We would have an outside entrance to our office and high visibility from Highway 23, along with easy access from Taylor Drive. Our monthly lease payment would be $100, plus utilities, which we have estimated to be $250 a month. Previous to this opportunity, we were considering moving to the first floor of our current location, the former Department of Revenue site. The rent would have been significantly higher, $1,100 a month with utilities included, and visibility significantly lower. The mall provides the tourism division the opportunity to elevate our efforts in tourism promotion, and I think that we'll have the capability to potentially increase traffic at the mall. I believe this is a win-win situation for the city and for Mem Memorial Mall, and I would greatly appreciate your support for entering into this agreement. I would like to thank you, each and every one of you, for your support this past year. I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Kim. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, there is a, there is a hearing to change the zoning of property located at 926 Broden Drive from class neighborhood residential and suburban mm -hmm. residential to class neighborhood office classification. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Sir, please come forward. Is there, go ahead. Is there anyone else that, Okay, hold on. Anybody else besides two, three? Okay, we're gonna go with three minutes apiece. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Robert Ecker. Okay, Robert hold on just a second. I need to get your. It's Robert. Yes. And how do you spell your last name, Robert? E C K E R. And your address? Three seventeen Ontario Avenue. Ontario. Oh well, yeah. Uh, and you'll have three minutes. Okay. I am directly west of the nine twenty six Broughton Drive, so I feel that this is gonna impact me the most. So that's why. I'm um, I don't have anything against a restaurant or a cafe. I, mean, I like to eat and drink and have coffee, but I don't want it 20 feet away from my bedroom window. I didn't buy this property and invest my uh, savings into it, thinking that someday it was going to be a business area. I was always under the assumption that it was part of the park or was city and it would never be for, for sale. And uh, my concerns are it's, it's not going to benefit me whatsoever. A lot of people in the neighborhood feel that way. Uh, a lot of them can't attend health issues, work issues. I myself had to take vacation tonight to be here. But uh, for the proposed cafe and restaurant, I mean, it's going to produce additional traffic, increase parking pressure, garbage litter, dumpsters, <coughs> vermin in the dumpsters, truck deliveries, commercial lighting, noise. I don't know how late this place is going to stay open or anything like that, but uh, that's some of my concerns. A commercial building would change the character or the appearance of the street. It's always been a nice, quiet hood neighborhood. Uh, summertime it gets busy, but we deal with it down there. I, mean, I don't really foresee how it would be great to have traffic nonstop all, all day, every day down there. It's, I already, I'm already picking up litter after all the festivities, and. I don't really have a problem with it. It's you know festive season, but to do it every every day, I'm I'm not too thrilled about that. Why? Some, some of the bigger concerns would be the playground for special needs directly across the alley from this. There's no off street parking for a business right there. There's already parking issues down there. Um, people parking in the handicap section that's supposed to be designated for handicapped people in the park and people that are utilizing aren't handicapped so I'm sure they're going to be increased parking there for people that shouldn't be using that and I don't I don't see how that it would, it would work out with the parking there most of the time in the summer I can't I can't even park in front of my house it's just too many people there I got. I have off street parking, but a lot of people in the neighborhood don't. Um, 
I just don't, don't see that that's a very good idea. Um, I don't expect a commercial building would have an adverse effect on a market value of my house either. My taxes went up considerably 2006. Um, I don't see having a business right next door to me, and if they rezone it, they could possibly expand it. I don't see anything but my value of my home going down. I Excuse me, Robert. Three minutes are up. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Sir, please come forward. Hi. Can I get your name, please? Scott Wagner. Scott Wagner. And your address, Scott? 322 Niagara Avenue. 222? 322. 322. I've been part of this neighborhood for 47 plus years. I grew up when there was a smokehouse down there and we had to deal with rodents, police coming in, shooting the rodents at least once or twice a week. And that's not a big issue. We have small children running around. Just across the alley from where they want to put this cafe slash bakery slash whatever. We don't get any answers. We asked the, um, the building committee, it's in the works with the police department, where is there going to be parking? They can't put it on Broughton Drive because you have the beach across the street. It's a narrow street. Across the street is another playground for the children. Where are we going to go for the children? We have, uh, my understanding is the Gus Macker is going to be moved next year due to parking and safety issues because people park up and down Broughton Drive. So as a committee, I would think that it would be hard for you to vote one way or another until we get answers. We don't know what they're going to do with parking. We don't know what they're going to do with, with the health issues. I'm sure they're all in line. But that's my <coughs> concern. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mr. Ecker, step forward. Hi, can I have your name, please? Rob Ecker, 609 Alabama Avenue, formerly this same neighborhood, though. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. I'd like to communicate my following concerns to you in person, follow up on the email that I had forwarded last Friday. The immediate neighbors of this site strongly object to the rezoning and have organized, as you know, to oppose it. Our <coughs> son and daughter-in-law have the home next door, as Rob had mentioned and certainly are going to be the most affected. We support their objections for the reasons they've stated and the other statements made tonight. I have additional concerns that evolve from being involved in our community, knowing the history and past direction of the planning department, and being a realtor for 24 years, broker owner of Houseworks Real Estate. This is a 1999 issue of small towns, and it's what small towns is small towns institute that spent a lot of time congratulating Sheboygan. This is that corner. And the sign says Ellis Historic Neighborhood. This is my son's home. And this is the site that we're talking about. With the accolades within this magazine, they state and picture one of the homes on the block and say several homes in the area have been restored in period style as the city endeavors to preserve both the historic and working class character of the neighborhood. It goes on to say the Ellis Historic Neighborhood also is an example of how the new development is integrated into an existing community. It will remain a working class neighborhood that is deeply rooted in the community. The neighborhood can be seen as a window that shows people the city's early development, but which has, despite its historic nature, avoided commercialism. <clears throat> Historically, the planning department's position has been to discourage less restrictive zoning, particularly in residential areas. Another neighborhood and the planning department opposed the recent request by Cargill site for rezoning to an ethanol plant. The planning department's position was that once rezoned, the future of the site could not be assured. The same applies to this situation. If rezoning goes forward, future uses of this site become much less restricted. I question the position presented in the plan commission meeting where Alder person Monte Mayor stated that the building could never be used as a residence because it would cost too much to renovate. 
She ignored the fact that to convert to a commercial use would be much more costly due to commercial codes, ADA requirements, and more. She also ignores the obvious evidence, the neighborhood itself. These homes have been remodeled. They have been improved. The neighborhood should be complimented for its turnaround, not challenged by this inappropriate use. As a realtor, I would ask you to examine your asking price. Building is put on the market last June of 08 for $250,000. Excuse me, Mr. Eckert, the three minutes are up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like, on the hearing only, address the council? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close hearing. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Next item on the agenda, 18-1 through 18-23, consent agenda, President Hanna. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you, motion and second. Alma Gisha, request. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if I could ask, please, to have 18-5 pulled out for a separate vote, please. Okay, make your motion. I'd like to uh, move that uh, 18 5 be pulled. Okay, no. Uh, oh, I thought you wanted it in the form of a motion. I'm sorry. Right. Uh, uh, the, the reason I'm asking for this is because the council had asked that action be taken regarding that small parcel of land on the south side that would have completed our child safety zones. And I want it just pulled out separately because, in response to that and, and the pledge to get that taken care of and working with uh, Alderperson uh, Clyunis Deckert, Ryan Flesh, uh, and well as uh, a lot of help from City Attorney McLean and the Planning Department and Engineering Department. We got it all platted out, and uh, this completes the child safety zones in the city. Thank you. I do need a motion to accept and file the RO. I move to accept and file the RO. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on, <coughs> yes, uh, Alderman Wang, Wang. Discussions on 185? Uh, just on a different item too. On uh, 18.5, the motion is to accept and file. And pass the res. Pardon? And pass the res. And pass the res. Resolution. Resolution. Resolution pass. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Balk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Owen Wangaman? I'd uh, like to pull out uh, document number 18, the council document number 18-20. 18-20. For a separate vote. Okay. Would you please make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee? Uh, make a motion to accept and adopt the report. And, and, and the pass resolution. a resolution. Mm -hmm. and Is there a second to that? Second. Second. Under discussion, Elman Wagman. Uh, it seems to me as though this is a bit premature when we have a remodeling of City Hall coming. Uh, what disturbed me a little bit was the fact that we would be leasing this uh, office for two years, and uh, such a lease may be hard to get out of when we have apparently a lot of space in City Hall. So I would uh, rather see that this uh, document be held until such time as we can determine what the actual uh, uh, use for the first floor of City Hall is going to be. And is there a demonstrated need? I, I know everybody would like a larger office, but is there a demonstrated need when uh, the city is trying to economize in every possible way? Thank you. Okay. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could just get clarification, because I had originally heard and thought I read that it was a one-year lease, and then I know Kim tonight said it was two, and her doc, her, uh, her presentation said it was two, but I, I think it might just be one. If we could just get clarification on that. Uh, Paulette, would you please come up. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. It is a two-year lease, and that was actually at the request of the department. Uh, we're going to have to make some investments in order to make the move that have to do with the technology, telephone, um, the 
the internet connection um, slash connection that we use. And so in order to make that investment, we did request that it be a two-year commitment with the mall. Okay, hold on a minute. President, President Hanna? Thank you. Um, my question is for Paulette. Will there be signage uh, on Colon Memorial indicating that the tourism office is located in that mall? We're working on signage on both Kohler Memorial, if we're allowed to put that up, as well as um, in the future on I-43, so that we can have some type of directional. And then there'll also be some signage on the mall itself, which will say you know, something to the effect of, we'll have the, the city's logo along with visitor information and so that it's very visible. And it, it's, I think it'll work well for the division as well as uh, as Kim had mentioned before, we're trying to attract people to Memorial Mall. Hold on a minute. Vice President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if I remember correctly, when this came to finance last week, I think it was only a one-year lease. Has that been a recent... Uh, I don't have the document with me. Alderman Gisha, can you refresh my memory on that? Or? Uh, Alderman Gisha? <laughs> Thank you. I remember it. Uh, I, I think our read of it was that it was a one-year lease. We could have read it wrong. So... Um, I remember going over the numbers uh, on it, and uh, I recall it being a one. But again, it was one of many documents coming through there. Um, while I've got the floor, please, Your Honor, if it's please. all right, I, question for Paulette. Um, the the funds for this doesn't come out of our general fund, correct? Correct. It comes out of the tourism funds, which is on the the dollars that we see come from the room tax mm -hmm. money, correct? Correct. And we were going to spend $1,100 a month. Now we're going to spend $100 a month. And I understand, I agree with Alderperson Wangaman, we need to start moving in over this time period. I think that's part of the plan. The office is back into City Hall. But a tourism department is a little different, isn't it, from a visibility standpoint? Can you give us your opinion on that? Yes, that, that's my opinion. That's my, been my opinion since um, we created the Division of Tourism, is that um, being a part of planning and development wasn't the right location for them, but at the t time it was very cost effective when we could get the division up and running immediately. So we've always been looking at another location. Eventually there may be the opportunity to have an office with the Chamber of Commerce if they're fortunate in building their building. But um, to move into City Hall I think would be a mistake. Um, not that it won't work, but that division needs visibility. Okay, we got one more. Alderman <coughs> Hessel for Paulette. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, I do have a question. Just to clarify, this will be the entire tourism division located out there or simply a marketing extension of the tourism division that's located downtown here? It'll be the, the two people that work for tourism. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was taking a liberty there, but that will be the entire... Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I, I did have some calls on this, Paulette, so I'm wondering, too, you obviously searched out the locations, and you, you, you like the location at Memorial Mall as opposed to maybe elsewhere in the city. Um, after, can you comment on that? We had considered other locations that became available. Most our, uh, and you can see that $100 per month plus utilities. Mm -hmm. Utilities is very, um, you know, I, I don't want to say that. it's it's very affordable. Um, we looked at other locations that were much more expensive, and uh, tourism. The city of Sheboygan is not responsible for the maintenance of that structure. It's not actually a much larger space. It's 1,000 square feet, and it has that outside access so that we're not relying on mall hours. Um, they can be open when they want to be open, as far as on the weekends or other special events, holidays, things such as that. When you know potentially the mall isn't open. Okay. Can I ask, and again, you know, looking at the back, at the photo on the back, is that how it's going to look with visitor information? That's proposed. That's um, the proposed? We don't have a, you know, an approved sign by, you know, either, you know, by, um, Kim is receiving quotes now, I think, okay. from three companies taking a look at signage, but it hasn't been permitted or approved. Nothing Those are yet. suggestions. Just suggestions. And you will have a sign that will be tall. Most, I mean, that people coming off the highway will know that our tourism division is there at, we're looking, at the mall. Kim has one photo in there, but we're also looking at a sign that would face north. So as you're driving on Kohler Memorial Drive, it would be very visible. Okay. All right. Thank you. Stay there, Paulette. May I have some uh, overbelt? Not for Paulette, though, if you want to, oh. general discussion. 
Okay, uh, Alderman Gisha, no, no Paulette? Okay, thank you, Paulette. Alderman Bow. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was just cranking. I appreciate Alderman Wongaman's uh, desire to be as efficient as we can. Uh, Paulette chases after about 325, excuse me, Kim chases after $325 million a year in money people bring to our community. And uh, by, by going to this location for two years worth of rent and utilities, it's going to cost about $8,000. So to put us in a better location in the city uh, for $8,000 when we're chasing after almost $700 million during that time, I think it's probably the wise thing to do. And Alderman Gisham. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I got to thinking more about this one or two year thing that uh, Alderman Bourne brought up. Uh, I think we're going to have to put in a fax line and some telephone service and signage. And signage isn't necessarily cheap. So the more I think about it, it's a better situation, I agree, with, with the two years. Um, I think we were kicking around one year at finance because of the way we read the document. But it makes sense we're going to have some investment in that. And again, it's tourism money not taxpayer general fund. It's not your tax dollars. It's room tax money going into it. So uh, I do support the two years. And uh, and considering those numbers that Alderperson Bach brought up, it would have been uh, 10 times more of our expense out if we hadn't sought out this other $100 a month opportunity. I think we're prepared to pay 1100 So congratulations to them. Thank you. OK. Uh, did you want to speak again, Alderman Kittleton? No. Oh, okay. Please call the roll. Bauk. Let me explain it. An I, I, an I, an I, I means to grant it. A no means. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. Aye. For Hassel. Aye. Wongman. No. And Bourne. Aye. 13 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Back to 18.1 through 18.23, accepting 18.5 and 18.20. Any more discussion? There is none. Please call roll. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleinus. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wankaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bauk. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1824 and 5 to be referred. Reports of officers to 1826 by the City Plan Commission recommending rezoning property located at 1926 Burden Drive from class neighborhood residential and suburban residential to class neighborhood office classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Wangerman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've listened to several people here tonight. And um, I certainly support their views. It seemed to me, and I'm no expert on rezoning, but in the past that we had always shied away from piecemeal zoning. In other words, I was always led to believe we zone areas and not individual properties to avoid a, a checkerboard sort of a, a situation to occur in the city. And I think there, the people who live in this area have valid fears or valid complaints. Uh, and with those thoughts in mind, uh, there's no way that I could uh, possibly uh, support this document. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question uh, either for a member of the City Plan Commission or the Director of Planning, but I guess uh, listening to some of the constituents here speak tonight, I am curious, what is the parking plan? That was brought up numerous times. What is the what? The parking plan. Has it been defined? I assume if when we embark upon such a project, that's a key facet of it. I'd like to hear what the parking plan is. As a Paulette. Thank you. Um, this is a, there's a couple steps to this process. The first step is the rezone. And city staff felt that it wasn't appropriate to jump ahead and start dealing with the parking issue before the zoning was um, accomplished on this site, if at all, you know, if it passes tonight. Um, so what the process would be is 
if the rezone would occur and let's say the use would be proposed as um, a you know bake cafe that business would have to go through the conditional use process anytime there's an indoor entertainment food I mean that's what food is considered indoor entertainment you would go through the conditional use process through that process you deal with a variety of issues the, the residents have valid concerns some of them are dumpsters you know it can be parking um, the impact on the neighborhood the hours <coughs> of operations the the conditional use permit is very precise and very detailed and that's what the potential you know the let's say it's a new owner of that building would go through in order to get that in order for that use to be allowed so at that time parking would be handled one of the I guess as we were going through the sale process you know and we still are one of the issues that has arisen is parking a um, couple of the individuals that were potentially interested have brought had mentioned off street parking or on site parking. That's something that the staff has recommended against from the standpoint of we feel if you put a parking lot on that site, that would be a, a larger negative impact on the neighborhood, in particular that resident that lives to the west. Um, they'd be looking at a parking lot. Um, you know, another proposed, let's, let's say it flipped to residential, that's something that plan commission wouldn't have any control over. If it, if it remained residential, someone purchased it for residential, they could actually put up a garage and the plan commission wouldn't have any say over that. So just from a, you know, so that the common council knows from a, um, a, a parking, when, when dealing with the parking issue, we did recommend against on-site parking, what we thought we could do is potentially go through public protection and safety and potentially allow a few more spots on Broughton Drive for parking for the business. Follow up, I may, yeah, if I may, Your Honor. Alderman Wongman kind of hinted to it, I guess, but I, I can't imagine this is a piecemeal approach. We must have a five or 10, 20 year plan. Could you share that for that area looking forward? I mean, is there a, a bigger plan looking at more commercial development in that area? Is this a once off? No. I wouldn't say that there's, um, you know, there's a, a big push for more commercial development in that area. That that piece of property is unique. Um, it, it, you know, as was mentioned, you'll see a, an historic Ellis District neighborhood sign on that piece. That will remain. Um, we're not proposing to change the structure of that building, or at least we aren't at this point. Um, you know, and neighborhood office that classification is the most restrictive classification that you could put on it next to residential it what it does is it allows and many times it's through conditional use um, sometimes not if it was something like the literacy council that was in there before that that use you know could potentially be allowed without going before the plan commission but um, restaurant cafe would have to so it's they are um, uses that are less impact on the neighborhood there's, they're, um, they don't allow the density that some classifications can allow for. And that, that's a, it's a tricky piece because it was never residential. There was always some type of a, a service use in it. So we, I wouldn't say, we, we definitely do not, we consider rezoning very serious and we look at it very closely. Do you personally envision there being more commercial development in that area? Is that where that area is headed, long, long, long term? Um, I, I would say that, I would say no. If it is, it would be something like this that would be more of that, um, the neighborhood type of development. If you think back on maybe the meat market, the, the tiny small grocery store that served the neighborhood, now the coffee shop that would serve those, you know, either the neighborhood or the people that are visiting um, the beach. We have Alderman Ryan, Warren, and Hannah. Questions for Paulette or not? Okay, Alderman Ryan, stay there, Paulette. I do not have a question for Paulette. Okay, but you'll stay there because the other two do. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this uh, property falls in the in the center of the second aldermanic district that uh, is uh, represented by myself and Alderman Bauk, and uh, the the. Uh, citizens of that district uh, elected me to represent their interests and therefore I can't support this this evening. I don't think that this is a, a bad plan, a bad use of the property. 
Um, it will take a property that is not on our tax rolls presently and will add it to the tax rolls for income for the city. Um, however, my, my uh, is to represent the interest of my constituents and therefore I cannot support this this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Board. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, question for Paulette. Uh, has the uh, potential developer or developers uh, given any indication whether they'll be able to use that building as it is now? Uh, are, the out, uh, are they going to tear it down and start over? Are they going to be able to rent it? Have they given any indication whether they can renovate it for the purpose that they have in mind? Yes, I have not heard that they're going to raise that structure and do anything different. You know, they may, um, through the conditional use permit, they, they may request you know, some other additional items that you'd have to add to any building in order to run a business, but I have not heard that they're going to raise the structure. Thank you. President Hennig. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paula, can you give us just a little more history of what's been in that building over time? I, I know that the Literacy Council was there. Um, and before that, it, you know, and, and it was before I was, I had worked for the city, the Girl Scouts had owned that property, and then they gifted it to the city and there aren't any restrictions. We did do a, a title search on it. So we, we, you know, we do have the capability of selling it. So after the Girl Scout House Literacy, my understanding is the Literacy Council was in the building, and then the Literacy Council kind of no longer existed, and then that was absorbed into the Family... Resource. Yes, Family Resource Center. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Gisha. Not a question for Paulette, if somebody oh, else has good. one. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it's kind of a neat Sheboygan tradition. We have little restaurants and things like that pocketing neighborhoods all over Sheboygan. North Star Bar in, in uh, Alderman Surik and my district, where you can get a pizza. Uh, Bill's Restaurant, I think of Tippo and all sorts of things. All over town, it, talk about Sheboygan history. Uh, these little neighborhood gathering places are exist everywhere. Um, I followed a case down in Milwaukee two and a half years ago now where this almost an identical situation. The city sold a pump house right, right in the lake, same other side of the street from the lake as we're looking at here. And the neighbors had valid concerns, they had valid fears, just like we're hearing tonight. Uh, Altera Coffee took it over and renovated it into a, sounds like exactly what we're doing here now. It was a tremendous success and a wonderful thing for the neighborhood and the neighbors to be able to walk and have a little gathering place like we see all over Sheboygan. This isn't really anything unique uh, to this as far as the city goes. Um, and uh, it, uh, it added value to the neighborhood. And certainly down in the lakefront, where do you go if you want to get a, a soda or a little sandwich or something if you're down visiting our beach and things like that it, uh, and tourists doing that kind of stuff? You have to go like six or eight blocks. Um, as far as the five or 10 or 20 year development plan down there, we have to think, what if the YMCA, and there's been some talk about them building a new facility someplace else. If the YMCA were to build someplace else, that would be a commercial development site. We'd be rezoning that area too. It's not checkerboarding, it's as opportunities present themselves. So uh, I see it as, I would love to have it next door to me at my house. I mean, it would be great. I think it'd be a nice, nice addition uh, to that neighborhood, just like it's been the same nice addition to virtually every neighborhood in town. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Next we have Alderman Bout. Thank you, Your Honor. Process question for Paulette and then some comments, if I may. Okay. Um, so let's say uh, this happens tonight, it gets approval, and then through the conditional use process, it becomes to where this, <coughs> this gentleman wants out and doesn't want to take the offer anymore. So then what happens? Is this been designated NO? And then, so a future, if a family bought it, they would own a home, but it would be in an NO district or an NO chunk of land. And then would we un-designate it so it went back to residential? How would that work? Residential is allowed in neighborhood office. In an NO. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so it, they could it, always it go up and way. do more NO type stuff, but they could also live. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So uh, I live uh, just a couple blocks from this. So uh, these folks that spoke tonight are my neighbors and they're certainly my constituents. Um, they've got very valid concerns, but again, I, I, uh, I've been, I've heard a lot on this topic over the last two weeks, a lot of feedback via phone and email from our constituents and uh, they're batting about 50, 50, they're batting about 50, 50. There are those who live very close within two or three houses of it who are very active and very vocal, which they should be because it's going to affect them the most. 
Uh, you get outside of that circle, and there are lots of people saying, I would love to have a place to stroll my baby down to and have a cup of coffee. Love to take my dog down and get a cup of coffee. Um, love to enjoy having this place nearby. Um, I think uh, what Alderman Gisha said about <laughs> every darn corner in Sheboygan has a bar on it. Uh, I, I don't think we're doing anything earth shattering here. Now that doesn't mean that we don't need to be respectful. And here, uh, I talked to this fellow for about 45 minutes about his plans. Uh, he's a lifelong Sheboygan resident. He, uh, he cares about the community. He wants to be a good neighbor. We talked about everything. We talked about the kids that gather across at the skate, you know, with their skateboards at the, uh, at the shower and overlook there at the beach. We talked about hours, we talked about noise, we talked about garbage, we talked about parking. He, he wants to resolve this and be a good neighbor. He wants to handle this as a good neighbor. He cares about the community. He loves Sheboygan, so he's not going to come in there and be a bad neighbor. Um, he doesn't plan any structural changes externally, uh, Alderman Bourne. Um, he plans to use it as is and uh, knock out a few interior walls or do whatever he needs to. He, uh, he sees this as going after people on feet, foot and people on bikes, and certainly People will come via car to get their cup of coffee, but he sees it as getting people who live within walking distance or biking distance of it. He see, that's who he's going after. He may have some music in the evening, some simple guitar stuff like they do at Z-Spot um, uh, to bring people in at night so there would be some night uh, traffic for people who want to listen to some night music. Um, and the other reason I'm inclined to support it is because this isn't the end of the story. If we approve this tonight, he still has to get through the conditional use process where he has to, to, to list out these very serious plans, very detailed plans, in ways that the neighbors will once again be able to speak up and voice their concerns about noise and garbage and height of buildings and signage and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm inclined to support it tonight because I'm hearing about 50-50 from people who want to enjoy this facility, but then those who are concerned about what it'll bring. Um, and I think, again, looking further down the road, as Alderman Verhassel asked, the armory is at risk. We don't know what the armory is going to look like. We don't know what the YMCA is going to look like. And we're putting really uh, expensive condos on the river a block away from this place, or th three blocks away from this place. So as we try to get more people using the waterfront in different and enhanced ways, this is something that people can, can, uh, can go and spend their money at. Uh, and it could be the beginning of a revitalization commercially of that area in a way that's respectful of the neighborhood. So I'm going to support it tonight, uh, trying to be respectful of the 50-50 nature of what I'm hearing, uh, but also wanting to be very, uh, very aware of the concerns of the folks that, that will be affected the most. So I'd encourage you to vote for it and then let the conditional use process make sure that, uh, that the guy's going to be a good neighbor. Thank you, Your Honor. And we have one more. Alma Clayness, do you wish to ask Paulette? Yeah, yes, okay. I do. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, Paulette, um, we have a, an other matters, um, item number 1844, which is a petition from people who um, don't support the placement of this, this business. What was the process? How did people know? That, have people known about this, or has this kind of gone, gone under the radar? And, and now it's, you know, it's becoming uh, an issue. I mean, how, how has this been communicated, these plans, to the neighborhood? Typically for... A rezone. The, the process is the public hearing t t tonight. Tonight, okay. And you know, there's a we have legal notific you know legal notification process for the neighborhood. So you have the public hearing tonight. We also took it a step further for plan commission and notified the surrounding neighbors, mm -hmm. so that they would have notice and they could speak at the plan commission meeting, which they did. So that was really an extra notification step. So it's published. It's noticed. They have a a right to speak tonight, and then, um, then, then it's really up to the Common Council. Follow-up? Just a follow-up question then. So people had a chance to speak at the City Planning Commission meeting, that, and people did come? Yes. Okay, they were heard. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Paulette, thank you very much. I will call the vote on 1826. A motion has been made to accept and file and put the ordinance upon its passage. Please call the roll. Yes, sir. And I vote would be to change the zoning, yes. Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Um, no. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? No. Surik? Aye. For Hasselt? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. 
Nine ayes, five noes. Motion carries. Attorney uh, McLean. Uh, thank you. Um, on a zoning amendment where there is a uh, protesting petition filed that requires a three quarters vote of the entire membership of the council, which would require 12. Now, the one thing I'm not aware of at this point, and I didn't bring my statute books or the zoning code, is whether the document that's in other matters, that's the petition, qualifies as a protesting petition under the statutes. So I'd, I'd have to look at that tomorrow, but that may be an issue. If it does qualify as a protesting petition, it certainly is a petition uh, objecting to the rezone, but whether or not it meets all the technical qualifications, if it needs to be, for instance, uh, uh, signed by a notary public, which this is not, uh, that, that would impact whether that would qualify. But uh, So uh, if it does qualify as a protesting petition, the vote needed three quarters of all the members of the council and didn't obtain three quarters. Alderman Belk. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a question about people who, on this petition, do they just need to be city residents or do they need to live in the district affected by the movement? Um, I believe just city residents, but okay. again, I don't have the statute code many or, of these or people the zoning nowhere code near, here tonight, nowhere near so the place. So. I'd have to look at it tomorrow. Okay, thank you. What was the vote? Nine to five. Nine to five. The motion carries as it stands now. To be referred 1827 through 1834. Resolutions introduced three, 1835 by Alderman Montemayor authorizing enter into a shared services agreement with Sheboygan County for shared sh purchase and agent services. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask for a suspension. Is there a second to that? Second. second. Is there any objection? There is none. Please proceed. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. The uh, Alderman Wangerman. May, may I ask what the uh, reason for the uh, suspension of the rules is? Yes, of course. The reason, oh, I'm sorry. The reason is that, as uh, Chairman Vanderstein and Adam, uh, Adam Payne had indicated, that the, the plan has been and the work has been put forth towards having this agreement take place at the beginning of the year. Uh, we do not meet again until the 5th of December, I believe. So we're hoping that we can follow through with this thing and uh, approve it tonight. And as the year kicks in, the agreement would kick in too for six months. Okay? Thank you. Alderman McLeanis. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to say thank you to the county officials that came. It was nice to have you on our ground um, to say what you, your support for this because I, I sometimes feel as if uh, we don't always hear your, you speak to us. And so I appreciate you taking the time tonight to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. The motion has been made. Please call roll. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1836? Lies over. Report of Committee 4, 1837, lies over. Report of Committee 8, 1838, by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, established revenue and appropriation for donation received for records retention. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. And accept the adopt the committee report. And accept and adopt the report. I did that twice tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And there's a second, 1838, under discussion. There is none. Please call roll. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1839, by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, established revenue and appropriations for fundraising activities by the International Committee for Contribution to Drug Enforcement Activities and for Contribution for the Hazel Hansen Teen Center at Mead Library. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that uh, we accept and adopt the report of committee and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. 
There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Uh, aye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Anna? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 11. Oh, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. On uh, document number 1840 and 1841, I ask for suspension of the rules. Is there any objection? There is none. Please proceed. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to make a friendly amendment to both 1840 and 1841. Do I have to take them all individually or both at the same time? Um, can you make a motion first to just pass the ordinances? That sure. Uh, make a motion to uh, uh, put the ordinances upon their passage. Second. Motion yep. second. Under discussion. In the amendment, Alderman Board? Uh, on the amendment, uh, first of all, on document 1840, uh, after, under section one, <coughs> and then where it says delete, and then it says, underneath there it says add. I want to make the amendment that would, that would read, add one handicapped parking stall behind City Hall immediately east of the back door and add one handicapped parking stall in front of City Hall, that would be the north side of Center Avenue, immediately west of the City Hall driveway. And then it would go on to read and, the rest of it would read and extend the 30 minutes parking City Hall business zone along the north side of center from 140, 146 feet to 178 feet, feet east of the east curb line of North 9th Street. And that was your motion? That and was my second. motion. There's a motion to amend and a second under discussion on the amendment only. <coughs> and we... Is this just on document 1840, correct? Uh, no. Yeah, but you're not amending 1841 at all. Uh, n well, I, I am going to, okay. but this, first this of all, just on, on 1840. Okay. Under discussion, uh, this has been a uh, very severe winter so far, and adding these uh, handicapped parking places will make it easier for our physically challenged citizens to conduct business at City Hall, again, especially during this uh, severe winter we've been having. And I want to compliment the janitorial staff and also the Public Works Department for doing an excellent job both in back of City Hall clearing snow and then in front of City Hall including the curbs so that it is easy for all citizens to get out of their car and come into City Hall. Thank you. On uh, 1840, on the amendment only, please call the roll. We can do it all. Do you want to? Sure. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now I need a motion to <coughs> pass as amended. Motion to pass as amended? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. This one we will call row. Yep. All right. This is for 1840. Clayunas. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1841. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to also make that friendly amendment and on document 1841, it would be under section one, and the second paragraph starts remove any, and then between there and section two, I would like to add my amendment. It would be the exactly the same amendment as I made on 1840 with the exception uh, of the last word and would not, would not be in there. Okay, there's, there's motion second to amend. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Motion to, motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Plaintiffs? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Before we do other matters authorized by law, I'm going to jump to 1728, which is resolution number 1660809 by Oliver Montemayor, authorizing and executing the purchase and sale agreement for the sale of the city's former recycling drop-off site, 
parcel to Coppercraft Enterprise LLC, and that has been noticed. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a second. Motion second. Under discussion. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, we brought this forward. I was asked to bring it forward by the planning department because we already had discussed this at plan commission. It was just coming around to plan commission the second time, which was last Tuesday during the snowstorm, which we did not meet. So I was asked to bring it tonight. And I think it would be wonderful we pass this and we get this on the tax rolls and we had a good bid on this piece of land, better than we expected. Thank you. Alderman, Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if I could ask uh, either Alderperson Montemayor or Mr. Bittner whether this piece of city property was ever considered as a salt shed in lieu of building the one that we talked about a few weeks ago, would, it, would this be a possible use for that property or isn't it compatible at all? Mr. Bittner, would you please come up to the podium? I'll be right with this. Thank you. Uh, it was considered last year when we got into trouble with salt for about five minutes till I walked through it and realized it does not have the, the clearances. The building just physically does not work. If you understand, we have to load front end loaders and do that type of stuff. It's much more of a, a storage building. Uh, Thanks yeah. for the information. Yeah. Thank you. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I was just looking at Robert's rules of order as far as uh, discharging the committee uh, of the document. And I think it looks like we need to take an action, make a motion to discharge the committee. I guess that's not what I mentioned to the clerk as I was walking in, but I was just looking at the rule, and I think there should be a, a vote on the motion to discharge the committee before you act on the main motion. Okay. 1728, we will hold a vote on that. President Hanna, motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to discharge the committee. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we're back to 1728. A motion to put the resolution upon its passage. It's been second. Any discussion on that further? Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to clarify, this is directly opposite from the DPW state station down at New Jersey, correct? Can I also ask who Coppercraft is, what their business is? I forgot, sorry. I, I, I'm not sure what it is. We have, I'm sorry, we have no idea who this is moving into this property. I mean, is it a petroleum oh, distillery? What is exactly are we doing with here? <laughs> Thank you. It's no, obviously. it's not petroleum distillery. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it, it's a gentleman who has something else similar down there, and he, he wants to expand and make it bigger. And it was a, a person that the plan commission was familiar with, and it's all perfectly reputable. But I can't say it's definitely not petroleum. <laughs> all right, well, I was just, I guess my question was, well, following up to that, was there any need for an environmental impact study being that it's proximity on the river? Is that? I'll, I'll have, yes, we discuss it. Paulette? And they already have um, another facility, and they're talking about relocating onto one site, and they are fully aware that the majority of that site is in the floodway. And that was disclosed to them, and they're, they're willing to handle that situation. I think it's essentially three-fourths of the site. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Any more discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clyunas. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law? Attorney McLean. Eighteen forty two is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June thirty, two thousand nine and June thirty, two thousand ten. That will be referred to law and licensing. Eighteen forty three is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Rob and Linda Ecker stating their objections to the rezoning of property located at nine twenty six Broughton Drive for commercial use. That will go to city plan. 
1845 is an RO by the city clerk submitting communication from Chief, Chief Kirk and Todd Preby, community policing unit of the Sheboygan Police Department, requesting the installation of neighbors against drug signs for the following areas. Okay, hold on a minute. Oops. Okay, that uh, goes to public protection and safety. You need to do 1844. Yeah. 1844, application and petition from the neighbors in the immediate area of the proposed rezoning of the property located at 926 Broughton Drive and stating their opposition to the rezone. That, that goes to City Plan Commission, yes? Just a quick question. So, so these, all of these folks are in the immediate area of that building then? Some are, some not. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. City Plan Commission. Uh, Eight. Continue. 1846 is a communication from John Burke the third requesting a waiver allowing overnight parking on the north side of Huron Avenue directly in front of the St. Nicholas Apartments. That will go to public protection and safety. 1847 is a claim from Richard Van Haveren for alleged damages to his basement when a city sewer was found to be backed up on South 26th Street. It will go to risk management. 1848 is a <clears throat> submitting an amended summons and amended complaint in the matter of Wells Fargo Bank versus Christian Ritt Miller et al. And we'll go to risk uh, management. 1849 is a claim from John Routman for alleged damages to his mailbox when a snowplow hit the mailbox and post. And we'll go to risk management. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>